All right. This is the last narrated lecture that uh, goes along with Lab 2, and it has to do with Lab 2, Part 3, the serial dilution technique. As it says here, you can use these slides in conjunction with the, the narrated lecture that's uh, the printable version that's available on Blackboard. And you're going to use this lecture to help you get through and complete the Lab 2 pre-lab. So as I said, this is the last dilution technique that you'll play with in lab. It's uh, called serial dilution. And serial dilutions are used in situations where you want to go from a fairly concentrated stock to a really, really diluted product. So for instance, if you wanted to go from a one molar stock solution to a 0.1 millimolar uh, solution, you would use a tiny, tiny, tiny drop of the one molar stock and a lot of water to, to dilute it down to this concentration. And so that can be very difficult to do accurately using a parallel dilution. So in cases like this, oftentimes a serial dilution is preferred. Now serial dilutions work by making a series of dilutions. So what you're going to do is take a concentrated stock solution you mix it with a certain amount of water in a tube, and then you use that tube as your stock to make the next tube in the series. So you dilute that solution to make an, uh, solution number two, then you dilute that solution to make another solution, and so on and so on, until you've carefully stepped down the concentration to the very dilute concentration that you want. Now the neat thing about this technique is that once you know which amounts of things to use, you're going to use the same amount in each step to make each tube. So you just do this procedure over and over and over again using the same volumes over and over again. And you'll end up with a series of tubes that all have the same volume, but are diluted by a constant factor. In this example, this viral suspension has been diluted, and each time it's been diluted, it's diluted by a factor of 10. So this first tube is one-tenth as concentrated as the stock. The second tube is one-hundredth as concentrated as the stock. It's one-tenth as concentrated as the first tube, and so on and so on, all the way down. All right, so let's look at an example of how to do a serial dilution. Let's say that, as it says at the top, that you want to make a series of tubes. You want them to each contain 10 mils of solution, and you want the concentrations to be 0.1 molar, 0.01 molar, 1 millimolar, which is the same as 0.001 molar, and 0.1 millimolar, which is the same as 0.00 uh, zero one molar. Um, so you want to make those solutions, salt solutions, and you are given a one molar stock to work with. So how can you do that? Well, first of all, let's look at the formula that you're going to use um, for this dilution. And the first, the first number you need to calculate is what we call the dilution factor. The dilution factor, as it says here, is the factor by which the concentration will decrease between the tubes. So they're going to decrease by a constant factor. Calculating the dilution factor is actually really easy. What you do is you take the concentration of one particular tube, and you're going to divide it by the concentration of the next most concentrated tube in the series. So in this case, we've got our one molar stock, we're going to divide that by the next tube in the series, which is the 0.1 molar. So 1 divided by 0.1, that tells us that our dilution factor for the series is 10. That each tube is going to decrease 10 times in terms of concentration. All right, now one of the big rules with serial dilution is that the dilution factor for a series must be constant. For instance, in the one that uh, we're in the example we're working on, the dilution factor will always be 10. It's always going to decrease by a factor of 10 between each tube. You can't do as it shows in this example here, 
where you have a dilution factor of two for the first dilution, and then it changes, and the next jump down is a dilution factor of five. It just won't work out with this technique. So one good thing to do with these kinds of dilutions is to figure out the dilution factor between each of the tubes and make sure that it's the same number before you assume that you can do a serial dilution. Now, if I give you a problem and I tell you perform a serial dilution, use these concentrations, then you can assume that a serial dilution is okay. But it never hurts to double check, as it will not work if the dilution factor is not constant. All right, so now we know that dilution factor. Let's look at the formula we're going to use to figure out how much stock we're going to use in this technique. Okay, here's the formula. Dilution factor equals V1 plus V2 divided by V1. So what do these numbers mean? Well, these are Vs, so they're going to be volumes, milliliters, for instance, or microliters. And each of these Vs stands for a couple different things in our process. V1 is going to stand for the volume of the stock solution you're going to use. In other words, it's the volume of uh, solution that you're going to transfer from one tube to the next. And it also happens to be the volume that you will discard at the end. And I'll show you that in a second. V2, on the other hand, is the volume of water that you're going to add to each tube to dilute it, and that will be constant. V2 is also going to be equal to the final volume of your tubes when you're done with the process. So V2 is a number that you know already. In this problem, you're asked to make tubes that are 10 mils each. 10 mils are your final volume, so your V2 is 10 mils. Okay, that uh, value we know. Now, we don't know the V1s. V1 is what we're trying to figure out. How much stock do I need to transfer between tubes? So it's going to be our unknown variable. All right. Now, once we know what the V1 and V2 are, here's how we're going to use them. Again, the V1 is going to be the amount of stock that's transferred into the first tube and the amount of solution that's transferred between tubes. So you'll add some stock, the V1 of stock, to the first tube, and then you add V2 of water to that. You mix it up, and then you take the V1 volume out of that first tube and use it as stock to make the second tube. You add that same amount of water again, you mix it, so on, so on, so on. So the nice thing about this technique is that you really only have to do one calculation, and then you've got your numbers um, that you can use to make a whole bunch of tubes. All right, so let's apply this to our example problem. Here's the formula. We know that our dilution factor is 10. We don't know our V1. That's what we're solving for. But we do know our V2, and it's 10 mils, because that's our final volume we want to make. So we fill the numbers in. 10 equals V1 plus 10 mils divided by V1. Now we have to do the algebra to solve for V1. And it's a little complicated, but it's really not bad. All right, here's our problem. We need to solve for V1. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get V1 out of this denominator. And the easiest way to do that is to multiply both sides times V1. So here I've done that. I'm multiplying it by V1 here. Since it's in the numerator of this, if this were a fraction, you could imagine it over 1. Since this is in the numerator here and the denominator here, they cancel out. And I've also multiplied it on the other side here. So now I've got 10 times V1. That leaves me with 10 V1 equals V1 plus 10 mils. Now what do I need to do? Well, really, I need to consolidate the V1s in this problem. So what I'm going to do, easiest way to proceed, is to subtract V1 from both sides of this equation. So if I subtract it from this side of the equation, it just cancels out. V1 minus V1 is 0. Over here, if I subtract V1 from 10V1, 
Diet leaves me with 9 V1. So now I have 9 V1 equals 10 mils. Now to figure out what V1 is, all I have to do is divide both sides of this equation by 9 to get that 9 out of the way. So divide it by 9 over here, it cancels out. If I divide by 9 on this side, I've got 10 divided by 9. And that tells me that my V1 is 1.11 mils of solution. Okay. Now how do I use these numbers to make my solutions? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take stock solution, and we're going to take our V1 volume, the 1.11 mils. We're going to take 1.11 mils of that and put it into a test tube. To that, we're going to add the V2 of water. So I'm going to add 10 mils of water to that. Now, you might think, that's too much solution. 10 mils of water plus 1.11 mils of stock, that makes 11.11 mils. And I didn't want that much. I wanted 10. But that's OK, because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take 1.11 mils of this solution you just made, you're going to take that out and put it into the second tube. And when you remove that 1.11 mils, the volume of this tube drops down to 10 mils. So you're going to do that for all of the tubes. And by the time you're totally done with this process, they're all going to end up being 10 mils each and their concentration will step down by a factor of 10 with each dilution. In this last step, you're going to discard 1.11 mils, and that is to drop the volume of this final tube back down to 10, because as with the other tubes, it will go up to 11.11, and you need to drop it down to 10. So you take that last little bit out and discard it, and now all of your tubes are equal in volume, and their concentrations step down correctly. Okay, So this is really a simple technique. Um, you just have to keep track of what you're doing. What I recommend is that since the V2 of water is the same for all the tubes, that you get your test tubes, you put the V2 of water in all of them, and then all you have to worry about is transferring your stock solution and mixing. And it goes pretty fast. All right, so hopefully that was helpful in uh, in working with serial dilutions. At this point, you should now be able to go to pre-lab for lab two and work on part D, which is on pages seven and eight. And you will be performing a serial dilution during lab two. Okay, thank you very much for your time.